Hi, I'm Willie and welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. So tonight what we're going to go over, is, since it's 2017, we're going to go over uh, the edge switch when we first take it out, plug it in, and some initial setup that I like to do. We're going to break this up into three pieces. Uh, this is, these three videos are a remake of like my, some of my first videos that were just a screen with a text pad. So let's hop into this real quick. All right, so what I've got is this is an edge router that I, I pulled out of the box, or I'm sorry, this is an edge switch that I pulled out of the box and I plugged it in. Now, you can see that the IP address here says 192.168.66.49. That's because this grabbed a DHCP address from my edge router. If you are plugging a PC in, if you're plugging a PC into your edge switch and there is no DHCP on the network, you're going to need to give your PC an IP address, a static IP, and the 192.168.1 network, but it can't be .2 because the switch is going to be 192.168.1.2 if there is no DHCP available. So please keep that in mind. I'll flash that on the screen, or it should have already flashed by the time you see this. So, when you first get to your edge switch, if you've just taken it out of the box, there's going to be a screen where you have to accept the terms of the Ubiquity licensing agreement. I've already done that, but I haven't changed the username and password yet. So right now, we're going to put in UBNT, UBNT. One other thing that I want to show you, if you have DHCP on your network, but you're not sure what the IP address of your edge switch is, and you've got Chrome, make sure you pull up your Ubiquity Discovery tool, and it's going to show you all of the Ubiquity devices on your network. Now, this is not, I click Unify Family there, this is not under Unify Family, and you can see that this is an edge switch, UBNT edge switch. Here's the IP, and it says that this is version 1. So that is how you would find your Edge switch. And you can click on this. I'm not going to click on that because Microsoft Edge is going to open because I haven't made Chrome my default. And I just have Chrome open, and it's better that way. So now we're going to log in. UBNT, UBNT. And the first thing we're going to do, we're going to check the firmware version. And we are on version 1.6.0, which I know is an old one, but you should always get in the habit of going over to... Uh, ubnt.com slash download and looking for your device and now this happens to be an edge switch light and you can see that the latest edge switch light firmware is 1.7.1 so we're going to go ahead and download this we're going to accept the terms we're going to download the file and it's about 14 and a half megs and so we're going to come over to our edge switch and right here on this tab it says firmware upgrade so we're going to click on that and it's going to show us the firmware that's available. We are going to upload a new firmware. So we are going to click the upgrade button. We're going to choose file. We're going to go to our downloads. We're going to select that firmware. We're going to hit begin transfer. And this is going to take a few minutes. So as soon as that's done, we'll be right back. So while we're waiting for that, I have bags of rack studs. Uh, I've been recording some video. I'm going to continue to record video. I'm going to have some rack studs videos. We're going to have rack stud races. It's going to be awesome. I'm going to present these uh, rack studs to people who've never seen them. If you don't know what rack studs are, stay tuned for those videos. Uh, I also have videos coming of security tools for Ethernet ports, for USB ports, all kinds of awesome stuff coming up. So stay tuned for those videos. I have not abandoned network theory. I think I'm going to start doing that every other week so I can really put some thought into that and make that the best product possible. So our progress is at 99% and it says the file contents are valid. That's awesome and it's copying the flash. Okay, our transfer is complete so we're going to click close. 
and we want the next active to be the 1.7.1 1 .1. so we're going to go ahead and submit this and I just get in the habit of always clicking save after I do anything and now we're going to go ahead and we're going to restart the switch and we're just going to say restart and OK and now this switch is going to reboot so we can bring up a command prompt start a ping to the 49 I can confirm but I've got the bright blue light so if you've got an edge switch you've noticed that the status LED when it's booting is a really nice blue color it reminds me of um, well kind of of this kind of this uh, flashlight it's like this it's a really nice blue it's darker than the blue this is a uh, menu uh, air cleaner this is a, uh, a blue by blue air it's a 411 they just came out with these things testing that out um, but uh, if you remember growing up in the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, maybe even the 90s, but you had the big Christmas lights, the big glass bulbs, that blue, that's what that blue uh, reminds me of. And then when it goes uh, to a lighter white color, then the switch is ready. So, and then once the switch is ready, we should start getting uh, a reply on the network here. So we'll see how long that takes uh, on the, the edge switches sometimes it takes a while for these things to boot so don't get impatient don't get freaked out just give it some time unless you've got no lights at all then it's time to start investigating other things other options like why doesn't my switch have power okay we got an ICMP request now and it looks like the router has presented us with a login screen but that's hilarious so uh, UBNT UBNT for the username and password do not use that in production I just had this conversation with someone tonight that couldn't believe that so many people will still use UBNT don't use UBNT UBNT don't tell me you're just joking don't use it okay so now we are on 1.7.1 which is the latest general release and we're gonna do a few more things so speaking of UBNT, UBNT, we're going to go to System. We're going to go down to Users. We're going to go to Accounts. Now, if you are managing the users locally, that's this is this is where we're going to do this. We're going to get into managing users from an LDAP server or from a central uh, uh, management authority in some of these videos a little later on. But for now, we're going to go ahead and click Add, and it's going to be W How and uh, privilege 15 will give us administrative privilege so that is the privilege level that we want we'll go ahead and click submit now we're going to save the configuration and i'll tell you what 1.7.1 is much snappier on the switch i mean much snappier i can't believe how much faster 1.7.1 is it's amazing so my hats off to the guys over at ubiquity all right so now we're going to log in as w how not ubnt because the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to disable the ubnt user so now we're going to go to system we're going to go down to users and accounts and we're going to check the little checkbox next to ubnt we're going to click remove and if you've ever looked at this in the configuration it actually puts like a no U user ubnt or something like that in there so we're going to get into the command line on this too because you're going to find that you can do things some things much quicker in a command line scenario or you can script certain things and copy and paste and it just boom it just happens so uh, make sure we save that configuration now the next thing that I want to do is you can see that we're not using HTTPS here and that bothers me so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up our management access so we're going to go to system management access and we'll just go to the system tab so you can see kind of some of the options so for now we have to leave http uh, enabled but telnet nope not a chance so we're going to go to disabled and we're not going to allow new sessions i don't know why any vendors still have telnet actually enabled in 2017 
if somebody can answer that for me and don't don't tell me that something requires telnet get up to date spend the development dollars and ssh you know and put ssh in so you would think that by looking at this it would be just as easy as clicking enable and enable and submit that's not the case so we're going to come over here first we'll start with ssh and the first thing we got to do is we have to generate our rsa and dsa keys so we're going to hit the little cog to generate the RSA key, because right now you can see that it says absent. We're going to get the little spinny wheel, and now we're going to see it's present. We're going to do the same thing for the DSA. And we could also change the SSH port, but we're not going to have this open from the outside. However, we are going to disable SSH version 1. And the timeout... The number of sessions allowed, those are fine. We're going to uncheck that, and then we're going to enable SSH admin mode. So now SSH has been enabled on the switch. We'll save that, and we can verify that. We can pop up PuTTY here. And we can put the IP address of the switch in. And it's going to tell us about the keys. And there it is. So then we're going to go over to this HTTPS tab. Certificate status absent. We're going to click the generate. So the switch is going to generate. This 1.7.1 is blowing me away. It is so much faster than some of the others, than most of the others. Uh, we're going to disable SSL version 3. I'm hoping in future releases that we get a TLS version 1.1, 1.2, 1.3 in here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and enable HTTPS admin mode. We're going to submit that. And we will save. And now we're going to log out of the, of the switch. By the way, I don't care what you're doing on the internet. I don't care if it's just marketing material. Encryption is essential in 2017. The excuse of, uh, you know, I, I don't have anything to worry about, that's it's bad. That's bad juju. Uh, you should always encrypt what you're doing. All right, so you can see we're encrypted. It says not secure. That's because we're using a self-signed certificate. But we are going to go ahead and log back in here we'll get into some of these other things you know to, to make things more secure more efficient in later videos so this is going to take a little bit of a, a different you know curve than the first three did the first three were kind of basic we're going to go down that path but we are going to really get into the edge switch series and really do some in-depth things so we updated the firmware we added a new user we enabled secure administration. What else do we want to do while we're in here before we get to the next video? So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to system and then summary dash dashboard. We're going to go over to description and we're going to give the system name a unique name. So we're going to call this H5 lab edge switch 24 this is an h5 lab contact is really how so we'll also be able to pull some of these from snmp but then also the dhcp table will show the system name the system name will also show up when we're using lldp to talk to other devices so we can identify our uplinks and things like that we'll go ahead and submit that and save that now another thing that's going to be it for this video. In the next video, we're going to, you know, set a static IP address. We're going to talk about switch ports, VLANs, all that routing and, you know, plugging this guy into an edge router. So this is the very first video in redoing this and going much, much further than those first three videos. So if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe, please comment and share, please follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Please use those Amazon affiliate links down below to buy your 
Ubiquity gear. It doesn't change your price, but it kicks a few bucks in here so we can keep feeding this lab and keep cranking out these awesome videos. I want to thank you again for being here, and we'll see you in the next video.